Rag rugs are always made out of recycled materials, and I always wanted to make rag rugs. Um, I lived on Long Island in the 50s and the 60s, and my mother was buying rag rugs from a local weaver there, and I just fell in love with them. In fact, I still have one or two of the rugs that she collected then. And I always thought, oh, I'd love to weave rag rugs. And it was always my plan to do that if I had any downtown downtime between jobs, but I never did. I always moved and I always got a job right away or I moved because I had a job. So when I retired, I um, bought a secondhand loom that was designed to be uh, a, was a rug loom. And I started collecting uh, recycled materials and learning how to handle them and what needed to be done and what wove the best. And I eventually decided to mostly, I almost all of my weaving is either 100% wool or it's 100% cotton. And I estimate by weight that the rugs are 85 to 90% recycled material. And the only thing I buy is the cotton warp, which runs from top to bottom, as you can see on the loom. And it's what clasps the threads and makes the fabric as you go. So I use tablecloths, I use sheets, I use towels, I use blankets, um, shower curtains if they're made out of the right kind of cotton. And everything's grist for my mill, as long as I think it's going to be, or I should say grist for my loom, as long as I think it's going to um, be good colors and it's going to weave nicely and neatly and it's going to be something that somebody's going to buy. Because as much as I might like weaving certain kinds of things, the truth is people don't buy light colored rugs, they don't buy um, very many brightly colored rugs, they want rugs that are that fit in with their decor, that look nice on their wood floors. They want browns and darker greens. They want darker red. with Portland Makers and I'm here with Liz Winchy who is a weaver and a cranker. So what, I've heard of a weaver, but what, what is a cranker then? Well, um, crankers are what people call themselves when they use hand cranked uh, uh, circular knitting machines or sock knitting machines. And um, crankers are, uh, well, they're the same kind of a thing as uh, home looms. Um, they were developed, uh, the Latrick was developed in the 1870s. They started doing the knitting mills and lace knitting mills. And then somebody got the great idea, let's send these out to people living in, mostly in rural areas and they can make their own socks. Mm. And they can also, they did the same thing with looms. They mailed them the looms and they could make rug, rag rugs. And so it was sort of a cottage industry for socks and rugs. Um, that started around the turn of the century and went well through the Depression. For the weaving, so the weaving, you do rag rugs. Correct. But, um, are there different types of looms for different types of weaving then? Oh yeah. Um, my loom is a counterbalance and so when you step on a treadle, some of them go up and some go down. So that's the counterbalance. And there are other looms that are jack looms and they push them up from the bottom. And the jack looms are the most popular looms in the United States right now. Um, jack looms don't make good rug looms because when you put it, this, the warp tight enough to weave a rug, you lose your space to put the shuttle through. It gets getting narrower and narrower. Whereas mm -hmm. this one, if I push on the treadle, you can see what a nice big space I have here. And, and, that's, and that takes the, the uh, shuttle for rugs really easily. I can also do anything else I would like to do on this loom. 
it's, it was built as a rug loom, but in fact, you can weave anything you want on it. Towels, blankets, shawls, you can do anything you want on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very versatile loom. Is this um, loom from a certain company or was yes. it made just for you? No, it wasn't made just for me. It, uh, it's a made in Quebec. It's a Leclerc. And Leclerc makes lots of different looms, but they make this loom specifically to meet the needs of rug weavers. And so um, Eugene Textile Center down in Eugene sells Leclerc looms. They don't sell this model. But I did all the research and found this model and I said that's what I want and I love it. But it's the first time I've had a brand new loom and a loom that was designed to do just exactly what I wanted to do with it. So that was where we started. And when you're talking about um, like this loom being uh, specifically for rugs, it, do you mean the rag rugs, or is it just like other different types of rugs you can make with it? Any other kind of rug that you can make with it, because all rugs need to have really, really tight, and they need to be really, really firm. Otherwise, they don't stand up under use, unless you want to just hang them on the wall, which you can also do. Um, and so one of the things that's got a very, very strong frame, you can see it's built in a big, long, straight line. Um, very, very strong frame. And then, um, because it's counterbalance, you get a nice shed, you get a nice space for your loom, your, your shuttle to go through. Um, and so that's kind of what makes it good, really good for rugs. And I see that these are the types of rugs that you yeah. make. Can we pull some out and look at them? Sure. Okay. I'll get some of this junk out of the way here. Um, yeah, these are rugs I made. Um, and they're all different. This one was made out of an army blanket. And so it's very, 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 if you feel it, you can feel how stiff it is. Mm-hmm. And what, what's this one with the, all the colors on This was made, this is something I love to do. I, I buy every army blanket I could find. This one's made out of um, beach towels. And you can see how bright and colorful it is. Mm -hmm. And that's something I love to do, and everybody loves to look at them, but then they don't buy them. <laughs> the goal is to both have something beautiful, but also to have something that people mm -hmm. will buy. This one was made out of flannel sheets, and you can see how much um, more muted the colors are. Oh, that looks like, yeah, more of like the pattern that I remember seeing, whereas this other one up here is more intricate, the yes. one on the top there. Yep. And this is an old, old pattern from the 1930s and 1940s, and it's called, um... How about if we hold it up you here? You hold it up? Yeah. It's called, uh, she says, um, a Hollywood rug. And here's another one. And they look really different depending on where they are, and they have this pattern called chicken tracks, and if you look, are turkey tracks. And if you look closely, you can see that the, there's black turkey tracks one way and there's white turkey tracks the other. Okay. <laughs> and this is this was a popular, popular pattern. It was called Hollywood. And it was so popular that they actually, when they sold the looms, they actually put this, uh, put this right on. They, they warped the loom with this pattern. And what pattern is this blue one? Can we pull oh, that, can, yeah. the dark blue one yeah. out? And this was, this was made on a loom that had been making, um, and if you can see, the bat, bat patterns, mm -hmm. the bands match. Yeah. So if you look at these two rugs, you can see that they've got the light colored band, they got the dark, they got the light, and that's, this is the Hollywood rug made plain weave where this is twill, and twill is a lot more complicated. Because you have to do one, two, three, four, whereas this is one, two, one, two. That's plain weave. The other thing that makes these complicated and more work to them is that the threads are done, every single thread is done separately. Um, and you probably can't see it in these. I'll pull one out and show you. These are, this is my bread and butter rug. They're done every other one. So it's twice as fast to set up the loom 
when you're doing every other one that, instead of doing every single one. Uh -huh. So these are these are every single thread of however many there are is done handled separately where these are handled two by two and you split them in half and you don't have to make sure that they're in a pattern. You're, there's no threading mistakes. There's no that's so that's my bread and butter. Roll. Yeah, that one you can really see like the, the actual some, fabric that you yeah. you use more so than the pattern. Yeah. This one I see a lot of the pattern yes. in it. Yes, you see a lot of the pattern in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this blue one that you were mentioning, and we'll bring it over here. This one is something that's called Kentucky Mountain Rug. And it's also a very, very old pattern from the 20s or 30s, or maybe past that. And what makes this expensive to make or difficult to make is it's the same thing. It's every single warp thread is handed separately, which is what gives you this lovely, where you see the warp threads instead of the fabric. Mm -hmm. And you also, you have to manipulate it in a way that the different colors show like that. So this is one side, and then everywhere that's black on this side is white on this side. Oh. And everything that's black on this side mm -hmm. is white on this side. And it's just the way it's done. So it's a reversible rug. You get two, two distinct So that's waters. that's the way that you set up the um, That's how the you set up the long on, and the thread on the machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And it's just very time consuming. It takes twice as long to do than to do it two by two. And the other thing about it is is that you have to keep track of what you're doing <laughs> because you have to to switch. So the white ones are on the front, and the black ones are on the front, and then the white ones are on the front, and that's how you do it. Um, and it's not hard to do, it's just slow and time consuming. More to concentration, do. yeah. Yeah, yep. And what, what are these um, edges? The edges, I, I weave a hem that's three inches long on, her, on each side, so I start out by weaving it, and I use, um, it's, this is what I use, a stick shuttle with the cotton warp on it, Mm -hmm. And I pick something that I think will go well with the rug. In this case, I just use black. And what you see, the black disappears and the white threads show. And so these are the just piece. the threads on the loom. Yeah. The, the like warp and the, the warp threads going this way. And then I use some of the warp thread to weave the hem okay. and just make fabric. Right. So I have a three inch hem, which you probably can't see because you'll have to come around and see. I, I, I weave three inches of plain cloth. Then I start the rug. Okay. Um, and I'm noticing that um, you're using specific, like, fabrics mm -hmm. that are look like they're woven with the color going all the way through rather than something just printed on top? Correct. That's in, in these tablecloths, that's the way they're done. And this was a tablecloth and it's very um, thready as you can see. There's lots of litter that goes along with it. But um, yeah, and so when I tear them up, you get the plaids show differently, and I'm afraid I don't have one to show you how different they look. But you end up getting strips that are all one dark, what I call dark strips, and what I call light strips. And so when I weave them, they all go together. You can see they go together, but they look differently. So what, in order to get an even pattern across, and we can find another rug that shows that, I alternate weaving a light colored strip, and then my next one's going to be a dark colored strip. Oh, I see. That's that's the difference because this ha has more. And what what other things do you use? Like this one was a tablecloth. Correct. Um, what other types of fabrics or found fabrics that were different other things? Well, I use wool blankets, and I have one I can show you. I can show you how I prepare. I can cut it up. Um, I use denim, and I've got boxes of denim over there that I can show you. Um, denim is like blue jeans. From blue jeans, oh. yeah. Mm-hmm. And some of it's really worn, almost white, and some is dark, and some are black jeans and white jeans and all the different kinds of things that people might wear. Um, the salvages we talked about, sheets. Sheets, yeah. Towels. So those are different weights of fabrics, too. Yes, they are. Okay. And then what you do is, um, the, oh, I should show you some pieces. This is, this is somewhat heavier than a sheet would be. And so it's about a two-inch or inch-and-a-half strip. When I get a thin sheet, 
it's going to be a three inch strip. It's going to be a wide piece like oh, this. Okay. And so, and then when I do a blanket, it's like this narrow because they're thick. And so you, um, it, it compensates, uh, in the end it, it compensates. So sometimes, and a lot of it depends on how you tear it up. And this is going to make a fairly thin rug. You make it out of a wool blanket. Boy, let's find one of these as a wool blanket. It makes a thicker rug. A wool blanket's thicker. And it makes a thicker rug. Right. It, um, so could you show us um, maybe how the, the weaving works? Sure. And then maybe describe it as you're doing it? Sure. So this is plain weave. So it's half of the... Half go up and half go down, and then well, that's one, and this is two, and the other half come up and the other half go down. And so it's just everything is completely even. It's just like your fingers like this crossing. So, and then I'm particular, I keep track. So, in this case, because it's nice long pieces, I put them through the end of the shuttle like that. I throw the shuttle, bring it across, Tuck it down, B. Do the same thing. Now I'm going the other direction, shoot it across, tuck it down so it makes a nice even B. And then I only have a little bit left, so I'm going to put that in my hand. And then I'm going to take a dark strip. So you can see when that weaves up, it looks lighter. Now I'm going to do the same thing, keeping track of which way I was going. I'm going this way still, over goes, and I just overlap it. So it's a con continuous piece of fabric. You know, the loom doesn't know that it's two different pieces because you've overlapped it. You can't see it in the end. You think, oh, I'm going to see that. That's so obvious. But actually, yeah, I don't see any pieces sticking out in your no. rugs. It just seems to come. And of you don't need it. So here's where we overlapped, mm -hmm. but you, but after a roll or two, you're not even going to see that. And then it just you just keep going. So in this case, it's kind of thready, and there's pieces that'll stick up, and you know and that's just well, people don't like that. They shouldn't be buying rag rugs. <laughs> so, um, so that's my measuring tape. So, so you, you can tell how long the right. rug is you're making? Yeah, and sort of okay. we've woven five inches. Five inches. And this is the part where you that's started the out just yep. um, weaving Plain. a little bit on. Just with, okay. just with the warp. And to that make it hem. fold it over to and, yeah. make the, the edge of the rug. Yep, and that's what this is. You fold it three times, and then it makes this nice hem. Okay, cool. Um, could I... You sure can. Out. And what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to advance the warp. I'm going to release the brake with my foot, and I've got these gears. I'm just going to move it up, and I'm going to get it nice and tight again, the tightness I wanted to do. And then you can start from here. So you're going to come in here and put your, okay. put your right foot or your left foot, ever. I would use my left foot, castle, and just On press down. Number two? Yep, that's number okay. two. Push down. I'll push down. Really hard. I push on the all the, the way back. up. There you go, right there. You just—that's why I stand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me here. Let me see if I've done it too tight. Eh, you're just not pushing hard enough. Oh, okay. Just push as hard as you can. There I you go. I shouldn't have worn my barefoot shoes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so then, yeah. Then you're gonna put the shuttle in. Oops. Okay. This is only a little bit. So first, you're gonna take this little end. You're gonna feed it through like this. And you just keep feeding it under these until she says. There. You can pull that through and just okay. keep weaving it through with your fingers. There you go. And then, yep, and a little bit more until it's nice and in there flat. There you go. Last a little bit. All right. Okay. And then you're going to beat as beat. hard as you can. Pull that's this beating. Thing? Yep, pull it hard, 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 hard. Oh, that's not hard. Really hard. There you go. Okay. And then we've done the light color. We've done the dark one, so we're going to put the shuttle back in. We're going to leave it right there. Your foot getting tired. I forgot to push on it. <laughs> That's okay. And then we're going to get a light strip here. Okay. She says, if I can. I like out. this color combination, how this is coming out. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Now you're going to put a 
light colored strips through. So press hard. Okay. And then away it goes. And I pull here? You pull. Okay. And then you keep track of, here's where it ended. So you keep pulling, pull some more. Until this kind of lines up. Here, pull a little more. Just little about more. that much? No. Yeah, a little, a little more. more. There you go. See the, yeah, there you go. Okay. Now beat. Now I'm going to beat. What do I do with this now thing? Now I just put I'm... it down. Okay. There you go. Like now, that. Yep. Now you Yay. put your foot on the other one, back on one. On the outside number one. one? Yep. Okay. And you're going to put the this back in again. Okay. And push it through again. And that's already, yep, there you go. Really? It's heavy duty work. <laughs> it is. And that's what they call the shuttle race. It just makes it easier to push it along there. Keeps That's the widest part. You make it look so easy. <laughs> I have been doing these for okay. a long time. So I got that yep. through. Okay, so you're going to pull it through and then here, just put it down here again. Okay. Then what you're going to want to do is you want to kind of make that look like it's sticking out about the same. And it's not quite doing that yet. Now, is when it? I'm beating it, am I supposed to be stepping on it still? Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, you can let loose. So. That wasn't it. There you go. That's that it. looks nice. Yeah. All right. And, and, you know, you really almost can't tell the difference between the light and the dark when they're woven in, because the dark ones have light colors in it and the light ones have dark colors in them. But it just kind of plays across and makes a pattern. Well, thanks for showing that to yeah. me. And um, so you make these socks also. I do. I make um, the socks. Can we go over and you can show us how sure. to make the socks? You, okay. We can do that. It'd be easy right. to do. Let's go do that now. Okay, so this is your cranker? Yeah, this is my cranker. This is my, uh, mine happens to be an antique, a uh, uh, restored antique, 1908-1907, was made in Quebec, um, and it has a handle, and, a, and it just, all you do is you turn the handle, it's geared, and you, it's hand cranked, or sometimes they call it steampunk, because it's, <laughs> Free electricity. It is a really neat little old machine. Yep. And so um, it just, that's all you do is you go around and around. But then if you want to make a heel or a toe, I'll show you. you. What you do is you take half the stitches out. So you're only working with half. You, these are all the needles go up. And then what you do is you go back and forth. So now I'm going to decrease by lifting needles up out of the way. So that be and on. So, yep, going this here direction. I am here. Yep, I'm yeah. going to decrease down okay. to the point of the heel. Okay. And so, yep, and you just go back and forth instead of going around and around. And you can set up and um, do nothing. You can do all of your stuff back and forth and get a flat piece of knitted fabric, like a, a muffler, for example. And so, yeah, and that's how you make it make your own heel and toe you just and then when you go back the other way you incur the stitches increase she says I gotta get that down again so now I'm gonna go back I'm gonna push a needle down and I'm gonna it's gonna get bigger I'm gonna push another needle down and you just go back and forth and back and forth and that's how you do the heels and the toes and the toes over here. The, yep, the toes okay. are the same thing, and I wish I had a pair to show you that hadn't been put together, but I don't. Well, yeah, I don't. Not easily. And what you do is you do the same thing with both. So with toe, with heels, you start, you, you're knitting, you're, you're knitting to here. It knits through like this. Mm -hmm. And then okay. what you do is you start to decrease the stitches, one, one each round. And then you get to the point of the heel, and then you increase and you and all along the same line, and you get to the same. And then what you do is you do like this, and you put all the needles down, and you and then you're knitting around in a circle again. And so when I get all of these down, so is this the the end? You start. Well, with I the start toe? with the cuff. You start with the cuff. I start with the cuff. So the cuff would be hanging down. It hangs like down. Like this, and mm -hmm. you do this um, leg part. Yep, you do the cuff. So here's okay. the cuff. This is where I started, and it went right down through. Mm -hmm. You can see. 
then I did a heel. Okay. Then I did the foot of the sock. Then, then I did the a toe. Heel. Okay. And, and what the toe like is, this. what you do is you do the same thing. You get to where you want to be. And I didn't press this, so it's a little harder to show. You decrease down, you increase up, and you stop. And you got this open mouth. And then what you do is you bring them two together and you stitch them together. And so and I'm really good at it. You can't see where I stitched it together. No, I can't. Are these different types of materials? Yes. Because this feels a lot thicker. This is thicker. Than this. And it's stretchy. Okay. This is a cotton wool lycra mix. And so you can see it's stretchy. Yeah, I can feel the kind of roughness of, yeah. of the wool, yep. but I wouldn't guess that there was cotton in there. It, the, the biggest ingredient is cotton, second mm -hmm. is wool, and then uh, lycra. Okay. This is a 75% wool and 25% nylon, and nylon, you can't tell the nylon's in there, but nylon makes it wear longer. And it's something called superwash wool, which is like smart wool. And Smart Wool is a brand name for super right, wash wool. Yeah. And so this has already been through the washer and the is dryer. Is that like merino wool? Or? Uh, merino is the type of sheep it comes off oh, of. Oh, okay. All right. So merino sheep have very fine wool. And this might well be merino because it's so very, very soft. Okay. I'd have to look at the tag for it. And which one are you using here? This one is a coarse, coarse 100% wool. And it's what my I call my, my scrap yarn or my waste yarn. And... What you do is I'll make sure that we didn't have a stitch come down here. And then you just go around and around and she says, let's get this. Oh, let's get it off of here. All right. And then you go back around and around. And um, you also use cotton then? Do you use cotton on these? Uh, you can, but I don't usually. You can make cotton socks. Cotton socks have absolutely no give. Okay. They are like... I don't know. They don't have any give, and they and they and people, you can't wiggle your toes in them very well. They're not. They put them on babies. Yeah, it's all it's and all then, in what you prefer. Right. Yeah. And tube socks are all cotton, you know. Well, anyway, um, thank you so much for yeah. showing me your lovely studio and all the weaving. Oh, it's fun. Do. Thanks for and, having me. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Yes, it was great. Okay. It was a lot of fun to have you guys come today. And thanks for letting me weave today, too. Oh, you're welcome.